Hey lady, what is this? This is an IntelliKeys USB. This is an accessibility board. Um, and what we're gonna try to do is get it working with our USB host feather with the RP2040 where it's a very low cost feather that has USB host built in. And something that's really interesting, but so we'll do a couple of videos, but it uses these custom overlays. So this is a touchpad. And then you have different overlays that have different capabilities and it knows which overlay you just inserted. So you see these like little black marks here, like on the other side, it has, this one has like three marks. Inside here are some photo cells that can detect which overlay got inserted. So like when this gets put in, like so, it goes beep. Hold on, if it goes beep. And then if you see on my notepad as I type, Wow, this works. Yeah, except I can't type very well. But um, those are custom overlay makers that you can do. So this is kind of neat. It's like a very useful accessibility tool. Um, thanks to AT Makers who uh, made a driver and also um, let us know how cool it would be if this was able to work on a device that's just you know pre-assembled, ready to go, plug and play. Because the um, internal chip in here, you might be wondering, why can't you just use it now? You can on Windows 10, but it has a special chip inside, it's like the Cypress Easy USB family that downloads firmware when it connects over USB, which means that basically since this isn't made anymore, um, it's really hard to get this working with modern operating systems like you know, Windows 10 or Mac. It's not gonna work with devices like iOS or Android or Chrome that don't have the special firmware downloader. So this is gonna be like a little HID remapper type thing where it's going to detect that IntelliKeys is plugged into here download the firmware in and then turn it into a normal keyboard. So this will just look like a regular keyboard with all of the overlay stuff working. So hopefully coming soon to the blog. Hi, Lady Ada, what's this? We are testing out uh, some new feathers here. This is our RP2040 Bones board, RP2040 basic with USB-C buttons, eight megabytes of flash. And in the space left over, we've got an RFM69 module. This could also be a uh, LoRaWAN module, sorry, a LoRa module that can run LoRaWAN stack on the RP2040, but this is just a plain RFM69. We've got a spot for a wire antenna, a UFL antenna connector, so it's good for uh, connecting larger antennas, a SemiQT, and I've got another one over here, and uh, if you back up a little bit, you'll see um, when I press the button on one, it uh, appears on the other one. So hold on, I'll, I'll fold this over. And then I press the button on here, it sends the message over. So they're communicating with each other and I also get the signal strength, which is a good way for me to test that my antennas are working. So all are good. Next up, I'm going to try Laura. All right, Lady Ada, what is this? This is a new feather. This is the RP2040 e-ink feather. So we took our bones file, which is you know an RP2040 with eight megabytes of flash and a STEM IQT, and in a little space over to the right, instead of a radio module or um, DVI connector, we've got uh, the circuitry for ink display. So um, the ink displays kind of all use the same 24 bit pin connector, which means that this can you know drive displays from like one inch diagonal to you know seven and a half inch diagonal, because again, they all use the same pinout. Um, nice beefy power supply here and all the circuitry you need. Um, and then it's connected to the eight extra GPIO pins that are not brought out on the feather. Um, so you get the SPI, you get um, the chip select, reset, all that good stuff, and a power pin for the NeoPixel so it can be used in low power mode. So um, I think it'll be good for standalone e-ink projects coming soon to the Adafruit shop. Hey Lady Ada, what is this? This is a prototype of our RP2040 USB host feather. And now you're probably saying, hey, you know, the RP2040 only has one USB port. Well, not if you bit bang USB host with PIOs. Uh, and we've got that added to teeny USB. Uh, and over here, this inductor is part of a five volt boost converter, which means you'll be able to run off a battery as well, which could be kind of neat. You got STEM IQT, eight megabytes of flash, all the buttons and crystals, and yeah, you got it a port there and then what we're running is the HID device report which is an example in TNUSB. So when I plug in this SNES like joystick thingy, you'll see over there the report and you can even see like as I press the buttons, different bits go on and off. So this is receiving HID keyboard or mouse data just fine, ready for some future projects soon in the Adafruit shop. How cool is that? 
All right, Lady Ada, what is this? Um, I'm testing out a new feather bones board I made that is specifically designed for e-ink displays. So it's got RP2040, battery backup, buttons, and uh, stomach UT, and the little area here is the e-ink driver circuitry, and I'm testing it out with two displays. One is you know, your everyday 2.13 inch tricolor display, and it's working nicely there. And then this one is a cool 5.65 inch seven color ASAP display. So these displays um, have seven different colors, red, yellow, white, green, black, violet, something else that I'm orange. Um, and so this is, we have some art from Bruce that uh, has some cool eight different characters. This one just takes a really long time to update. Um, but you know, as normal e-ink goes, once it's been updated, um, you can remove the power and it stays on. So that's kind of neat, like so. All right, Lady Ada, what is this? This is Canception. Um, we've got this new board we're going to put in the store. This is a CAN bus transceiver. Uh, it uses the TJ1051, which is a nice high-speed CAN transceiver from uh, NXP. And uh, you got like an on-off switch for the termination, and here it is. So you could use this with a board that has native CAN, like this um, ESP32-S2. And then to test it, I want to have like another CAN device that it talks to. So I've got a Feather M4 CAN here. Uh, and every time the LED blinks, it's sending a message over the CAN bus lines. And then I press this down and it says, okay, I've received the message on the secondary. You know, it, it's it's connecting to the native CAN on here. It says I've received the message from the um, Feather M4 and I'm even powering it from the same board. Uh, so it makes for a very quick test for this transceiver. Very nice, in the shop very soon. All right, Lady Ada, what is this? This is a new product we're about to put in the shop. It's our CAN bus feather wing that features the MCP2515, which is an SPI CAN controller, and then there's a CAN transceiver on here as well. Um, you're supposed to use this with any of our feathers, even ones that don't have native CAN controllers in them, to connect to and send receive data on a CAN bus. Um, some devices like this Metro ESP32 S2 have native CAN. And so we're actually kind of doing a thing where it tests itself by having the native CAN talk to one of our CANPAL transceivers, which then connects to the pads over here on the CAN feather wing. And so one CAN bus goes through SPI, one goes through native, and they send messages back and forth. And when they beep, you know that data was sent successfully back and forth. So this board is fully tested and ready to go in the shop to add to your next feather project. All right, Lady Ada, what is this? Um, one of the things I've been showing off lately is how we're using this RP2040 to um, program ESP32 modules and chips um, very quickly. So this is our Wi-Fi uh, airlift that uses an ESP32. And I used to use a Raspberry Pi computer to program the ESP32 using ESP tool, um, but thanks to the really good code from TAC that um, pre compresses with gzip the file. It's actually quite fast to um, burn the Nina firmware uh, over UART this time, two megabits per second. It does MD5 check. And then the last verification is to make sure that this ESP board is working well. We over SPI ask it to scan the Wi-Fi and verify that it sees um, the Adafruit access point. And if it does, it does a little rainbow dance over here so that we know that it's past test. So this new version of the Airlift Featherwing with Stomach UT is coming to the shop soon. Hello, Data, what is this? This is a tester for the upcoming part number 5710, which is the DVI Feather, uh, to just update this board, which came without a silk screen. Um, but new PCs will come in, and uh, here's the board under test. And what's neat is we're using our own five inch HDMI display as the DVI output test. So. This Pico loads over USB the UF2 to do the test as a GPIO test. And then, hey, check that out. The test OK symbols uh, uh, signal appears on the DVI display. So that's how we know that the HDMI is working. Um, so this tester is pretty fast. Eight seconds to load all the firmware and do the DVI output test and all the GPIO. So pretty happy with this. It'll be in the store soon. All right, and then you've got some boards. Yeah, I decided um, I'm, I'm kind of getting back to some designs from a couple of years ago. So this is a DWM 
Um, this is a ultra wideband uh, chipset module. They're not cheap, but like they kind of do one thing that no other modules do, which is indoor positioning, which is really hard to do. Um, so this, uh, that's the module kind of above your head. And yeah, this design was from 2020 or 2021. And then, yeah, we couldn't fabricate it because we couldn't get modules. But the modules are available again. Um, so this is the Featherwing version. And then the next thing is, uh, this is the Feather RP2040 version. So there's like a little bit of space over there where, you know, we'd have the DVI port or ink connector or whatever. Um, so I just stuck that module instead. And the antenna hangs over, but that's okay because you actually want to have the antenna unimpeded it's not unusual to see them hang off of boards um because they give the better the uh you want like a lot of empty space around it so you can get clear signal from the other uh, nodes to do that pinpoint uh locations uh this is the um 16 bit uh i squared c dac chip so we have like a couple 12 bit dacs in the shop but let's say you want more bits because you're like i want really precision analog output um this is a nice analog devices uh chip that does a 16-bit output uh it has a built-in temperature compensated uh 2.5 volt reference as well and that is the gigantic amount of top secret we did this week Whew, got so much